Also joining us now, National Criminal Trial Attorney Michael Jaffer. Thank you, Mike, for joining us here on the show. And, Mike, I'll begin with you. I want to get your thoughts on this motion filed. It was uh, uh, an expedited motion. But the main question I want to start with is, and it's being asked by this particular filing, is, well, if Alec Baldwin was treated that way, given a dismissal with prejudice, why should Hannah Gutierrez be treated any differently? It was the same misconduct that she had to deal with. She shouldn't be treated differently. I think the judge is going to grant her motion. I think she absolutely should at least get a new trial or or have her case get dismissed. I mean, Alec Baldwin had his case dismissed with prejudice. To be honest with you, Michael, I'm very conflicted. And my co-panelist is also a, for, as a public defender. I used to be a public defender. I'm conflicted. When we were public defenders, we didn't have the resources to bring to bear like Alec Baldwin and the attention to these cases. And I have to assume that that is the reason why this came out. There's an unnecessary competitiveness by some prosecutors and some state DAs that shouldn't exist. Some of them, not all of them, most of them don't do this, but some of them are more focused on winning rather than making sure that they got the right person and they got the evidence in the hands of the exculpatory evidence in the hands of the of the defendant. And I'm sad, I'm sad that this is happening. And I know as a former public defender why. It's because you have a guy with a lot of money and a lot of attention. He deserved to get his case dismissed. Kudos to him, but I'm conflicted for that. And 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 it kind of bothers me. All right, so the court grants the motion. Um, Michael, do you believe they grant it with prejudice, without prejudice, such that she has to be tried again? I want to assume that they do it without prejudice. She's allowed to be tried again, okay? And we have the report that maybe these bullets came from uh, Seth Kenny and PDQ. We also get in this report from this third expert who says there were some problems with the gun that they don't think was caused by the testing that could have made it possible that the trigger, uh, or, or it happened the way Alec Baldwin suggested, that he didn't pull the trigger. Does that change the result? Because at the end of the day, what she's being charged with, she should have been the last line of defense to any of these real bullets getting on the set. Does that help her in a retrial? You, you literally just said exactly my sermon on this case earlier today. I think this, uh, she should be getting a new, she should not be dismissed with prejudice because at the end of the day, her role in, that, in this event was different than Alec Baldwin, right? But she should get a new trial because there's exculpatory evidence. There's a big, gigantic, sore thumb in the room, right? There's exculpatory evidence that was not given to her attorneys. What's the harm? Give it to the attorneys. But I don't believe that they're going to dismiss, uh, the judge is going to dismiss her case with prejudice because at the end of the day, she should have her day in court and she should have her day in court with all the exculpatory evidence. There is a universe where they would have given this evidence and she still would have been convicted. There's a universe. She was the first person to be tried. Somebody had to pay. Somebody had to be punished. And she was the official armorer on the case. And a live round did get past her into that gun. The malfunction of the gun and all of that, she, her job was already done by that point. Mm -hmm. She's just basically saying uh, one of the barrier, one of the exit ramps in my mistake was taken away by me. And I had some exculpatory evidence that would have said there's one more exit ramp on the highway to her death. And it was, uh, pr you know, precluded from me. So, but I don't think it'll be dismissed with prejudice. Yeah, I would have to agree. But I do say a big part of the prosecution's case was the idea that those bullets were brought on the set by her. So if you change that equation, again, it's possibly exculpatory. We don't know. But if that equation is changed, it could change the outcome of the trial. You just don't know. That's the big problem. National trial attorney Michael Jaffer, to sort of play out here, Michael Jaffer, um, they talk about him. Um, it, it, now, again, I'm not even sure if the mother is not sort of playing a game here. I mean, it seems very calculated, at least on one level. But l let's say it's just legit that this is how she feels and that he is hiding something. Now, the name was redacted. We don't know who she's talking about, but it certainly seems like could be Jen, the mother, in this case, is someone he might be sort of covering up for. But I'll be honest with you, you know, God bless mom and she believes in her son, but even if she's involved somehow, I'm not sure how much that helps him. I'm not sure the prosecutor ought to work with him in any way, but your thoughts. Yeah, it, it, her, the defense theory is gonna. The defense is gonna want to bring in any exculpatory evidence if he, if they can find a way to have the mob testify in any way, shape, or form that overcomes hearsay. Where I saw, you know, uh, that the redacted person. I think we all know it's the mother of the of of Miss Soto of the young lady. Um, if she can, if they can find a way to have her, and you grasp for straws when you're the defense and your client is facing something serious because you want to protect your client. You also don't want it to be said that you missed evidence because that's the nightmare of any criminal defense attorney. So clearly his mom believes that he's innocent and clearly his mom believes that he's just being a, a, a knight in shining armor and covering.
covering up for the real uh, perpetrators. Hey, listen, if they can, if there's anything that the mob can do to testify in any capacity that overcomes hearsay, obviously you throw it in. And I'm always baffled by these jailhouse emails. I just found out recently that people were exchanging emails back and forth there in jail. If you're a criminal defense attorney, what are you doing, client? Do not email anybody, because even if you say a very clean email, they might come back and say, remember that one time you told me that you murdered someone? We've seen people get convicted because of responses to emails. So it's crazy. It just, it bothers me. Yeah, yeah it's a national trial attorney. Michael Jaffer. All right, guys, our first comment comes from Billy. Billy says Jen Soto will end up with conspiracy charges. It's coming soon. FBI got this. It just takes time. They are putting the case and pieces together. It's all going to come out in the wash now. She clearly knew, like how in the interview she spoke of her daughter in the past tense, she knew where she was dead. Michael, your response? Uh, yeah, that's pretty uh, sage, sage uh, uh, input by uh, the, the viewer. I mean, you know, wh whenever a, a child disappears, the spotlight is mainly on the parents, right? Especially when she allowed her daughter to sleep without her supervision with the guy, who, the defendant right now. I mean, you, you, you clearly are a careless person, right? Because when your child winds up dead, whether you're involved or not, you at a very minimum should have had a parental radar and that's kind of what this viewer is saying without saying it there's a parental radar in every parent right and her parental radar should if she would unless she's a complete derelict which maybe she is her radar should have you know put her into the situation where she's got to know that her daughter needs to be protected and she clearly did it and look at the result yeah and the pictures that they found on his phone dated back to i think two two and a half years before